You are watching the GameCreds.com Clan Invitational Finals, cast by myself, Total Biscuit. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Shoutcraft. Right here. Yes, indeed. We have a killer for Team Dignitas in the Yellow Trunks. He's playing Zerg right here on the Metalopolis versus his opponent over here to the west. No name, aka Greetorp, for Team Fnatic. In a turnaround that should probably surprise quite a lot of people, Greetorp was able to counter-attack after losing what I would like to class as almost frickin' everything and decimate Killer. Killer had nothing left by the end of that. It was a absolute slaughter fest, a charnel house from both players. Incredibly messy. I thought, honestly, D-Killer had it. I really, really did. The amount of damage he was able to do to the economy of his opponent, particularly with a very clever maneuver, bringing his opponent out of position so he could drill his way through the center rocks on the scrap station map. It was a stroke of brilliance. It worked extremely well, but unfortunately, it was not quite enough to take the head off the Terran Beast. And indeed, Greetop came back from that with a devastating 7 Thor push backed up by heavily upgraded Marines that cut its way through everything Killer was able to put in front of it. Oh, wow. It, it, was, it was good, folks. It really, really was and if you're watching a VOD right now and you haven't watched that game then you're fairly silly because of course you haven't watched the games in order in which case you might be very sad I make playlists for a reason damn it why do you not use them if you're watching the live and you missed out on that oh well you really did miss out on a game and a half I tell you that for a fact no name says no you can't you don't have planning permission it's not allowed you can't build that here you can't build your conservatory as loud or indeed as proud as you would like it it's fisticuffs and indeed won by Greetorp and that's unfortunate indeed unfortunately for him he now has to leave and repair so a little bit of a delay on that and Killer actually decides to plonk down his spawning pool instead so he's not too worried about that again using a build that is increasing in popularity by certain Zerg players what you do is you build your extractor first then your spawning pool and then your expansion and you cannot mess with it folks it's difficult to mess with it does delay some economic prosperity potentially as well as the number of units you can bring out early game but it's a pretty cool build nonetheless and indeed it also allows you to get out your metabolic boost quicker magic isn't that wonderful? Lots of speed. Two barracks coming up right now for Greetorp. Looking for some early game aggression. One has to imagine. Not going through to the Hellions this time around. Not really bothering with them. Bearing in mind, the Hellions actually didn't do all that much. They were well, well pushed away by an excellent defense by D-Killer in the uh, previous matchup. So I can only think that Greetorp's going to try something a little bit different. Going to shake things up a little bit with the Marine Heavy strategy. Once again, we notice that Greetorp likes to build his initial barracks and supply depot at the bottom of his ramp as opposed to at the top in order to allow him to expand nice and quickly so he's got a little bit of building based defense to limit the attack angles of his opponent as well as be able to build stuff right into the middle of the battle and respond to it. There's the hatchery and as we see the metabolic boost is already well on its way 30 seconds in it's good stuff and Killer now pushing his way forward. Bear in mind, though, that you'll note that Greetorp has, well, lots of Marines. He already has five and continues to pump them out with the two barracks startup right there. He's feeling pretty happy about that, not really bothering with anything else. Long enough to maybe fend off some early game aggression as well as perhaps inflict it. D-Killer, no way, absolutely not. Five Marines versus four Zerglings without the speed upgrade is, of course, a foregone conclusion. Indeed, even with the speed upgrade, I'd call it a foregone conclusion, but there you go. Lots more coming out and on the way, and there's that expansion that we saw quite early before. Not quite as quick as the last time, but it's good enough nonetheless. And Greetorp starts pumping it out right there, tries to get the economic advantage over his opponent, tries to at least stay equal with the Zerg, or indeed ahead. Metalopolis is known for its nice long macro games. We'll see whether or not we get that. D-Killer decides, nah, you know what, I don't want to engage right now, I'm not feeling it. They were just sort of chilling out. Oh, whoa, 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 Greetop, Greetop, with what I would class as a little bit of an all-in play right here. Again, he can recover from it, but the amount of economic damage that's going to be done to him, because of the amount of SCVs he's throwing in here, is fairly significant. It's two barracks, backed up by SCVs. It is what I would like to call the Korean, yes indeed, the Korean style of very early aggression against the Zerg. It works very well. It's called the two barracks build into the middle right there. And the question is, will his SCVs be able to take everything out in time? The Zergling count is pretty much nil right now. Oh God, I think D-Killer is actually in an awful lot of trouble now. No question about it. 12 more Zerglings on the way. But will he lose everything in the process? The Queen with the Valley of Defense right there pulls back. Looking to lose that expansion though. 60% health right now. Continued harassment. There's the swarm right around the side. It's good. He pushes it back with brutality. Yet more coming in. Oh yes, a reversal fortune right there and an excellent defense there from D killer absolutely astonishing and now his opponent lagging behind somewhat in terms of his economy excellently 
Well, well played there by Killer. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Really, really good. Able to push away what would have ended a lesser player. Very patient play with the Queen. Didn't throw it away to its death. Held back just a little bit. Took the damage on the hatchery, which he knew he could deal with. And then turned around with a great flanking maneuver. Brought in Zerglings right here from the side. And then charged forward with his Queen and the remainder of his Zerglings for good damage. And in the meantime, he's now looking to do a little bit of counter-attacking. Will he be able to do that more to the point? Because right now, Greedsoft continue to push out those Marines again a little bit behind economically not by a huge amount but it's fairly critical at this stage of the game seven and a half minute mark we currently have a difference of now oh good god yes 10 harvesters that is damn significant no question could that prove to be critical for Greetop? he was looking for an early ender and he didn't get it and now d killer with not only map control but with an economic advantage that is quite significant. More drones coming out right now. He knows he's under no threat. Admittedly, he actually is if Greetorp decides to go in, but I have a feeling Greetorp now feeling a little bit gun-shy as a direct result of that. Now starting to turtle up with his bunker right there. Wants to try and hold that line from a counter-attack. Of course, if he decides to do that, then he's at risk of being out-expanded and out-built. Lair is already available for killer. Baneling Nest is on the way. Double Factory is coming up right here for Greetop, looking for the same build as he did last time. But with the amount of damage he inflicted on his economy, I have to wonder if he can actually support that. Can he support two factories on 19 harvesters? I don't know. I really do not. There is now a 20, almost a 20 harvester lead, 17 specifically, between the two. Killer is really rolling it in terms of his economy. Very good. Double saturated mineral lines. Lots and lots of money. Delicious money coming in. Loads of money, as those who are into Killing Floor will attest. And if you're not into Killing Floor, then, ladies and gentlemen, you are not part of these British Isles. Okay. Now... Greetop setting himself up in a very nice defensive formation. Wants to make sure that that ramp is fairly well protected from harassment. Double factory play coming up. It's back into the Hellions, folks. Again, the Hellions will certainly work out. Quite cheap in terms of the minerals, so it is understandable that he go for Hellions right now as opposed to pumping out any higher tech units. Reactor coming up so he can keep going on that. Roll out three at a time with those two factories. Double Engineering Bay coming up right now to follow up with his strategy that he put into play last time, which was heavily, heavily upgraded Marines. Very, very powerful. My concern right now would be that Killer decides to wait a little bit too long. If we have a look and see what Killer's actually building, he's got another hatchery coming up. He's got his evolution chair. He's got a roach one coming as well. He already has the baneling nest, and he doesn't have the centrifugal hooks upgrade. In terms of actual forces on the ground, he has dedicated pretty much everything to drones and has now gone for yet another expansion there. So ec economically, it's very, very good. The problem I would have is that if he waits too long, it's going to allow Greetorp to actually recover from this economic disadvantage. I mean, he's currently 19 harvesters behind. That's a fairly big deal. However, in terms of his food count, he's a little bit behind as well. But that's mostly in terms of work. It's not in terms of actual fighting units. There are 11 Marines and 5 Hellions on the ground. Infernal Pre-Igniter is almost complete. Upgrades will be coming for the Marines. And right now, I've only got 6 Zerglings and 5 Roaches and 3 Queens up for D-Killer. D-Killer feeling that he can just hang around right now. And I'm not entirely convinced by that because as we roll out once again with those 7... Yes, indeed, the 7 Hellions. D-Killer deciding not to respond to that at all. Oh, dear. This could be problematic. Let's see exactly what he managed to pull off with this. He rolls forward as quickly as possible. How much damage is going to be inflicted? Let's go and have a look at the defenses. Are there indeed any? The roaches will provide the defense right here, but they can't be in several places at once. If he decides to split up his Hellion force, that could be problematic. Right now for D-Killer, immediately comes in to respond. There's the attack. Looks for the damage on one. Doesn't manage to take it. Straight out of there. He does actually now have two forces of roaches. Looking for the Glial Reconstitution upgrade. Once he gets that, the mobility of the roaches will be critical in defending himself against this Hellion attack. Goes in once again. Oh, that's very, very, very good for D-Killer. Excellent stuff. Look at that. What a catch. What a catch. And he takes two more. Excellent play there by Killer with a flanking maneuver, a bait and switch. He is ready and blocks off the retreat path of those Hellions. And now the counterattack is rolling on out. And he does have that roach speed upgrade. Right now, honestly, Greetop doesn't have anything to properly repulse a group of roaches of that size. 20 are on the field. He looks for the breakthrough. That's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to stick the boot in right now. If he takes out that tech lab, he'll disable the stim. I'm surprised he's not doing it. And indeed, Greetop knows it. Look at that. He sees a high priority target. Needs to focus fire on it. He wants to take the command center instead. Indeed, he thinks he can do both. He can. He can. The stim is now canceled. 
Greets up in a huge amount of trouble right now. Marauders are available in that bunker, but all of this line right here is going to get absolutely devastated by their horrific roach saliva, folks. Oh, God, it's a horrible way to die. A horrible, horrible way to die. Yes, now supply block right here for Greetop. Pulls everything off the line. Does he have enough SCVs to repulse that? That's what he's looking for right here. However, he's able to slightly outrun his opponent. Again, no stim is available. The mobility not in the favor of the Terran player right now. The army count difference is almost double. 124 to 65. Killer applying that pressure as he knows he can. He has the numbers for it. No Name holds the line, and he does hold the line effectively. Oh yes, he does have the Marauder count. However, Killer was drawing him out of position, or indeed trying to. Looks for the surround. Oh, it's very, very good. Excellent stuff. Killer once again, a master of deception. Brutalizes his opponent. Can he bring the bunker down? That's the last line of defense, aside from those SCVs. Continue popping out right here. A hive coming out just to seal the deal. Greetoff gives it up, folks. It's one apiece in this best of three series.